All right, hello everybody. Uh, we talked about last part about general tips, um, some like how to attack it, but we didn't actually talk about, you know, uh, pickaxe versus shotgun versus sub versus sniper, you know, and different ways to attack it and get your opponent to shoot, deal damage. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a bit about peace control and then edits you can do when you take the wall. Um, we might also talk about inside the box fight in um and phase in but we'll see what time we're at let me start my timer here and then we'll get popping set boom all right let's go so this is going to be attacking the wall so we talked about you know how you want to go about attacking the wall if you remember i mean i hope you remember i'm going to upload these pretty consistently here if you don't remember I, i'll link the episode in the description again but you know you don't want to drop down on the box like this because then you get boxed you want to however you want to do it you want to attack usually i like the cone tactic like this and attacking like this but a pickaxe is 75 damage to the wall no matter the wall but there are other ways to, to go about it let's say your opponent just boxed up and you're chasing them you can get the wall to one shot and then run up and take it or you can take get get the wall to one shot and then when you take the wall you can place the stair on the inside through the turbo bit, because the turbo build delay is 0.15 milliseconds, I'm pretty sure. So you can take the wall and then place the stair during the same process. You just have to practice almost pickaxing and then click in your, your stair, which mine's Q, and then build your wall, which is E. Almost like super quick, if I messed up there. And you want to make sure it's QE or, you know, stair wall, and then you get it on the inside. You can also do it if you don't, let's say I don't get the wall here and my opponent does, I still have a stair inside the box. Usually what they do when there's a stair inside the box is they try to pickaxe this. Obviously it's going to be more built. So might, I'll wait, it's gonna take two pickaxes here. And while they're doing that, you can either A, place a stair behind you to phase in. You might as well talk about phasing now, like this, or um, just go for the wall. You have to be careful because if they're able to hold the wall and get the piece control again, you're going to be in the open and they can go for a box like this, and then you have to try to run away. Where are you here? So, that's, you know, again, the wall weak with an a, with, you know, a gun. You can also kick the wall with a gun. I like using doing this a lot. Um, the tack, the god tack is the best for this, because, you know, it holds eight shells, and it does the same damage as a pickaxe. So that's why you see a lot of W keyers. Um, using the god tack because you know it can two shots and you can break a wood wall and you can use it also to break builds uh, after they've been reset which we talked about a bit last part so after you reset a wall it's always going to be low so you just literally shoot it and take it back without having to take out your pickaxe it's good for people in high ping because you don't need to go through the motion of taking out swing and put in like this whole motion here you can just you know get a weak shoot it and then go for the edit or whatever uh, you can take it with ARs I like doing this a lot too I do a lot of box fights where you can do like something this is one I like to do a lot about taking the wall you edit like this and you shoot the bottom corner and then you can keep shooting it and see if you can take it and if you can take it then you can go for something like that if somebody's peanut butter peeking you like this they're not holding the wall most most cases they're have their gun out and they're going for a peek so what you can do is get the wall low and then try to take the wall. If you don't get the wall and they get it, no worries. If you wanted to, you can you know shoot the wall a bit like this and even just be kind of crazy and then phase in all one movement. Um see if I can get it down, pat. It'll be like hmm. make sure you're halfway in the box like this, and you jump and phase in all one motion, you know. Not really the best at the old stair phase like this, but it can be done. Next, let's talk about a sniper strat. Um, Savage uses this a lot. Mr. Savage M. Recommend watching him out. I don't have a sniper, but let's just say my sat spaz is right now. He'll be above. Notice point his opponent's boxing up. He'll jump down, and when you sniper no scope a wall, it gets it to one shot. And then you can use whatever you want, whether it's a shotgun, go next, or if you just jump down and then pickaxe right after or just switch to an AR and literally just take it once with your bullet 
So snipers are good to get in walls to one shot. It's also good for breaking walls that are just built. You know, it'll catch people off guard because they won't expect a wall to break right away. It's like having the deagle back in whatever metal meta that was. Where the deagle breaks the wall instantly. You know, it's really good. It, it works really well. Uh, it catches people off guard. You can take builds. You can, you know, phase stairs through like we talked about. Or like you no scope the wall, get a stair in. You know, even if they're still on the wall, you can do whatever. Try to take the wall. Now it's attacking with the shotgun in the air and the sub. Usually you want to use the air and the sub when you're chasing your opponent like this. You can get also get it weak enough where you can phase in. And basically phase in is when you put a stair behind you, get the wall low, and then when you jump, you want to phase in like that. So you're, if you notice, you're going to be like right about here in the air. If you don't notice they have anything here, you can place a stair, go for an edit, shoot like that. Um, other types of phasing, you can do this with a cone instead. So let's say you get the wall weak and then you edit the cone and jump in like that. This is good because you're over here, they're expecting the wall replacement. When you're phasing in, you don't want to be up against the wall like this because it's pretty obvious you're going to be phasing in. And they can probably do a little switcheroo like this on you. So you want to make sure that uh, you're a little bit distance away. So they think you're, you know, going for a wall replacement. Even just hold out your, your builds like this to look like, you know, bait like this that you're going for a wall replacement. And then psycho into the box like that. You know, they won't expect it at all. You could do it with, you know, this here. Hey, I'm waiting for this guy to peek. Okay, let's get the wall low. And then, you know, make sure the wall doesn't build. Right now it's at 75. Jump in. Go for the shot. Uh, another phase trick, which is placing a cone inside the box. You can do this with a stair too, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But it's just run up. So, you know, if you notice this guy doesn't have anything in, run in, place this, run back. And then, when you, you know, decide to phase in, you can edit like this, go for a shot like that. Because you'll own the inside of the box. Usually what ends up happening is if you do this phase trick here, their immediate reaction is to run because they don't own the centerpiece here. So if you do get this wall, they have no way of editing this because they wouldn't own it. So usually they run to one of the sides. I find in most cases, opponents go to the left or the right, or the left or the back or up. I find for some reason they don't go to the right that often, but that's just from my personal experience. So let's say you do you do like this. Um, a good player's first reaction would be to run. So you can predict where he's going to go. Okay, if he goes over here, box him up. If you think, well, he's just going to go right over, you know, piece him up like this, do a shot, he goes to the right, do the same thing. You don't have to jump down, by the way. You can just piece him up and wait for him to run out and then shoot him. But that is phasing with the cone and the stair behind. Fly down to phasing. There's two other phases, which I'm not the best with doing. Uh, there's the momentum phase, which is hard to show without a friend on. But let's say you're coming down to attack. If you keep your momentum up and the wall's one shot, you can just literally just run right through. I don't know why you didn't break there. You can just run right through the wall and phase directly in. It's pretty hard to time it because you have to make sure the wall's low. And then you just literally run in. You've noticed when I did it there, I didn't slow down at all. I didn't stop when I hit the wall. I pickaxed before I got to the wall. So it's pickaxe like that and uh, you just keep your momentum up you don't want to run into it and then be pickaxing because you won't phase in you want to be shooting and then pickaxe and then you're in um another one is the crystal phase so in the center of the map there's these crystals you can eat and they can let you phase into walls so if you're pickaxe in here uh you get the wall low and then you would double click and that would like a boom, shoot you in so it would shoot you in like this and you would have to time it where you know again where you pickaxe and then you click where you would shoot into the back of their box uh, but that one's pretty difficult to do i don't think i've even done it yet this season so we talked about phasing into the wall attacking the wall we still got about 10 minutes yet 12 minutes left so let's talk about um with that, with that. let's talk about what you do when you take the wall so this is something that I just learned from okay, who? somebody, but um, basically it's you don't want to edit with your shotgun out like this. You want to keep your blueprints out. So let's say I just take this wall. You want to do all your edits and then you switch to your shotgun at the very end. So it would be, you know, place the wall, edit, 
you know, place whatever you want in the center, switch to the left, you get the right hand peek, and then shoot. This is good because if your opponent decides to run farther away, so let's say he's running to the back, if your blueprint's out, you can place a wall in the back here like this, and then see if you can catch him like that if you're quick enough. That's because when you have your blueprints out, you can edit walls from farther away. I mean, let's just show you here. Blueprints out. Um, oops. There you go. Blueprints out. I can edit from here. Shotgun out. I can't edit. So you want to have the blueprints out until you know you can have a chance to shoot. Um, it's important that when you're pressuring someone's wall, you do, you know, unpredictable, unpredictable edits and peaks. Um, the most... Oh, most common thing is, you know, you do, you just fucking edit something like this, or... Most common one really is you go like this and you do the mongrel classic, like that. Um, which is pretty common, because if this guy knows that you're going to do the mongrel classic, which is, you know, ingrained in everyone's muscle memory, you might just sit right here and do, like, the counter that I talked about, where he just phases in, you know, you edit it, and he just goes, and then runs back. Or he might just sit right here and wait for you to do it and then hit you. Is you might might be so ingrained in your memory to do like this that he's just gonna get a free pump on you because you're standing right in the open. That's why you can do a protected mongrel classic. There's a few ways to do it. The window one where you go like this and then you peek and shoot. Uh, you can do it in the center window two, peek and shoot. You can do the top three corners. You know, do something like this, peek and shoot. You can do it just straight across. Oops. You know, like this, jump, peek, and like do this, maybe do a reset, shoot, whatever you want to do. There's plenty of ways to use the Mongrel Classic protective, or protectedly, so you don't get shot or just stand in the open. Uh, the, the rule with taking centerpieces is if they see you, place a cone inside. If you're getting them from a surprise, so let's say you've got this, this wall over here weak, and they think you're you know, going to be pressuring here, and you go... And you like catch them by surprise. Okay, that's great. Catch them by surprise. Then you go for the classic. But in most cases, you want to place a cone inside instead, just because then they don't own the centerpiece, and you can decide whatever you want to do from here. All right. So now we talked about just being unpredictable, doing different edits. Let's just go over quickly the best type of edits, really, in my opinion. Um, if you're attacking like this on, you know, the stair, the cone, or the stair in here is pretty good. If they're in the back, you can place a stair, and elevate them if they're on the left, or switch it and elevate them if they're on the right. This kind of gives them a peek though, so maybe don't do that. If they're underneath here, this is a good edit because you can literally like Kifu peek like this. Um, if you just want to have the cone in here, you can go like this. If you notice they're running, they turn around, and just they're going over here, you can go for a peace control. Um, other edits you can do is, let's say for some reason you decide to jump down on this guy's box, um, on a stair. So you jump down like this. Uh, you do end up, let's say you sniper the wall, you get the one shot, you take the wall, but, you know, he already has a cone on you and you're stuck like this. A good edit to do, which I don't see a lot of people doing, is you do the four corners like this and you position yourself to the left of the box. This way, if your opponent's down here, you have a right hand peek and he can see you a bit, but he can only really shoot at your legs. So he might hit you for a 60, you might hit him for like a 150. That's a good edit. Um, some other edits that you know you can use is uh, I call this the worm edit. There's probably another name for it, but let's say your opponent is over here in this box, and he owns all of these here, and he's he's back here. Oh, he's right here in this one, and he was in this one. I might take this wall and do an edit like this, and then I'm just might, might be like, okay, well, do the same thing here. You know, remember you can edit from this far away. Hello. There, and do an edit like this. This way, if I'm attacking here and I get this wall, he might think, I'll just run back into the old boxes I have and you already own these here. And usually he'll try to build here or he'll try to reset it, which he can't because you own it. Um, window edits, talk about that. that, that. Uh, different stair edits you can do. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in my defend in the box. Let's say you get a stair in here, you can do like the L where you land here, phase down. You know, there's tons of edits really you can do. You can do one where you go all the way around like this and then do the same thing, but this this time you can come and land right on top of him if you wanted to. 
Um, yeah, switch not make sure you switch up the edits. Don't do the same then twice. Or you get predictable. But that is it for lining up the edits. What are we at? 14 minutes. Um, let's do uh, Yeah, might as well finish it off. What pieces? So let's do inside the box fight in. So that means you've got inside the box, however, and if he owns the stair, make sure you at least have some way out. There's there's no reason to hop inside someone's box. If they own everything, if you don't even have a beam on them, that's just fucking crazy. If you've got a beam on them and he owns the stair, and let's say he's under the stair and he's placed it like this, chances are he's going to run. No matter, like, let's say he decides, all right, I'm running out the back like this. You need to break through the stair, try to take this wall when he's leaving. So take this wall. So let's say you take this wall and he goes, I'm just going to box up right here. Then you can just break through the stair and you own this and you go for a shot. But in most cases, um, whoever owns the centerpiece is in charge of outplaying, and the person below either is in charge of, you know, taking the gunfight, deciding if you want to take the gunfight, or deciding if he wants to run. Usually, if I'm hopping into a box, I want to at least make sure I own something in here, whether even if I just own the cone on top. Even if I just own the cone on top, at least that means that this guy can't go up. Let's say he's in here and decides he's going to run over here. So he does, you know, an edit like this, the run, and he resets it. One, sh you know, the wall's going to be one shot, and then you can take it and go like that. Or you can just say, all right, he's doing it like this, like this. You can just spray through the wall. I missed it again, but, you know, you can spray through the wall and go, or pickaxe through, or take out your sniper, and, you know, one shot the wall. You go for an edit. Uh, if he's going to do the phase Martos where he edits like this, but he doesn't actually go out and jukes you out, you know, you just have to see if you can read that. Um, most common edit is they is you're in this corner and they drop down like this, free shot, because they're falling in the air and they have to take out their gun to shoot you. Um, you know, if they could do an edit like this, they're going to be falling right here. If they do a bigger edit like, uh, like that, uh, they could go on top or below, or they even stay there and do something like this. Boom, shoot, fall down, or like a reset, whatever. Uh, in most cases, if they're under the ramp like this and you're on top of it, they're just going to phase you down. Uh, then people don't really know about phasing is that you can actually move against the back wall. If you notice I'm moving, the best way to move is you hold down S or your backwards and then move with your... Uh, arrow keys or whatever but you're not arrow keys a and d but you can move pretty fast without it so this is good because most cases people phase and they just stand still like a turret and that's it um but if i wanted to phase on this guy i could move a bit like this and then see if i can catch him off and get like phased underneath and then you know, shoot jump whatever if you if it's a cone in the box you know there's not many edits they can do with a cone they can flip it like this or they can keep it like this and go for... You know, this is a good one that I like to do. Um, let's say I own the phone the box, you know, I'm jumping in. I'll try to position myself so I land here. I'll edit this. This will block the shot. You reset it. Go for a shot. So that's inside the box fighting. Um, now we can talk about how to practice the game. So the first thing is arena is the best place to do it. If you're not already champs, uh, you know, grind the champs, get the champs, whether that's through... You know, playing placement points or playing W key. Him. Ideally, you want to get the champs your own way. So by W key on or you know playing defensively and winning fights, you want to make sure you're fighting your way to champs and not just camping your way to champs. Um, but let's say you know you're in champs or even if you're not in champs, whatever. Um, the, depends on where you want to practice your W key. If you want to practice mid game fighting, so that's when you know you roll up on somebody, you sneak out, you get a beam, and then you. You know, phase in or do whatever you want to do and fight them. Um, then you want to land somewhere that's either decently hot, so like retail, holly, slurpee, something like that, um, or somewhere completely safe, like stealthy, uh, craggy, steamy, or an unnamed POI, and then push people mid game. If you want to practice, you know, um, salty, like uh, early game fight in, you know, salty, lazy, and sweaty are really good for that. So you can practice, you know, clusterfuck scenarios, having weird ass loot, you know, going up get up against someone with a blue tack when you have a green pistol, sniper, and a fishing rod. Um, it's a great way to lose points too if you don't end up winning a lot. But you know, points are just points. You just want to improve is the most important thing. 
So that's good for clusterfuck, shambles loot, low material box fights, which is, you know, a great way to practice 200 IQ plays because you're going to have to use your surroundings. So like if this was a building and if I notice, hey, there's a gas can over here, I can shoot the gas can and do like 200, 200, or 200 IQ out plays. Uh, you can play box fights in general. You just join Discord server. I'll link some of them below. Uh, Atlantis, Kingara, and whatever. Join a Discord server and box fight people. Um, you can, if you're not the best at box fighting, just say you're trying to practice and you're not the best and just looking for someone similar. Um, then you want to play zone wars. Don't play these one v one zone wars where all it is is you know two people cranking the height, uh, just you know ripping nineties over and over again until one person decides to chop down or one person decide gets a lucky cone or whatever, or they do like that thing where they start off like this and then cone jump or whatever. That stuff won't help you in my opinion. Um, so if you want to practice in zone wars, try to do the 16 man fill zone wars so you can practice everything. You can practice end game tunneling, which we haven't talked about, but we will. And you can just practice everything and you can W key people with different skill level because, you know, you no idea who you might find in creative fills. I found PSM Macwood once before, but yeah, that's if you want to practice W can, uh, obviously arena is probably the best one to practice because it's more realistic for tournaments and stuff. But you want to make sure, you know, the best box fighters in the wor world, world's world are people who play a lot and play arena a lot because they put themselves constantly in this situation of box fighting over and over again. You know, Mar Faze Martos probably has like 100 box fights a day. And that's a lot more than, you know, me or uh, you or whatever, or most people because, you know, he's a streamer, but whatever. You just want to box fight as much as possible and lose. You know, you're not going to win every box fight. There's going to be people better than you. If you lose, it's because they outplayed you or you made a mistake, and that's it. So, you know, there's only a few scenarios where if you, you know, played in a box fight or lose in a box fight, that it's the game's fault. Now, if you were lagging or if your ping is high, then that's not an excuse because you know your ping's high. So you have to play like your ping is high. You know, if my ping was high and I died, in most cases, yeah, I'd just be like, alright, well, I fucked up. I shouldn't have went for, like, the Mongol classic because I know my ping is high. Anyway, that concludes Attack in the Box. Next episode, we might go into some real game examples and leave creative, or I might just go back over the basics because I feel like I might have missed a few things. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed.